Hey everyone, welcome into another week of tailgating with Chef Dave. This is week number 14. It's Minnesota and Detroit, and I'm alone again. No big deal. It's not a big deal. We're having fun. Tailgating is all about community, right? Hanging out, having a good time, uh, just doing your thing, right? Like waiting for the game, getting hype, right? So I'm going to do something really fun and comfort-ish. I mean, we're thinking Minnesota, right? Like, what are the iconic foods? Like, we've already did Minnesota once this year, right? We, we, we um, did the Juicy Lucy. We went on Big Jim's house on CSX. We now are looking a little deeper, right? It's cold as all get out. It's the first time that the Lions have had a game of value or importance or excitement and forever, right? I mean, I'm being serious, in a long, long time. Maybe not forever, but a long time, long enough that we don't remember when. I say all that to say this. Let's think about iconic foods in Minnesota. Wild rice, right? I remember talking about wild rice, Minnesota, wild rice, wild rice soup, right? Um, we, we think about things like, uh, Cold, right? Hearty foods, the Juicy Lucy, like I said. A um, lot of immigrants in Minnesota. Um, people that come at different times and thousands of people, so at different times. And so there's a lot of European food influences of different kinds. Um, you have the, the uh, Italian immigrants that came in that were miners, thousands of them came in and they created this uh, iron uh, range uh, porchetta, if you will. It's a, a, a spin on even Italian beef, if you will. It's not necessarily a, a traditional Italian porchetta, but man, it looks really good, slow roasted kind of thing. Um, really, really cool. Um, so the North Star State, cold, right? Tailgating, we're outside, it's pretty frigid. We need some hearty foods. And I, and I was thinking like, What's the first thing that came up on every list? Every time I look at a list, and I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm fumbling through all my, my notes, but I'm telling you, every list that, that was, was, it was Swedish meatballs. Swedish meatballs, Swedish meatballs, done a million different ways, but pretty much a traditional Swedish meatball. So today, I'm making a traditional Swedish meatball. Um, I did for an interest of time, ground up some of these meatballs ahead of time. But for now, we're gonna start by turning on our, our or not turning on our thing. We're gonna make some meatballs. I'm gonna show you how you make them. You got my bowl here. So you take a pound of ground pork, a pound of ground chuck, ground round, set that over there. Um, we got our ground beef in here, right? And you need a little bit of Pepper, salt, and you think it's pretty aromatic. These are very interesting kind of uh, uh, meatball, if you will. Um, so you got the allspice thing or the allspice seasonings with the cinnamon, clove, and nutmeg. So we just put a dash of these awesome almost, you know, they're baking spices. So it's very interesting to me that we're using them in a meatball, but I have some meatballs made and they're, they taste like Swedish meatballs. You know, like the ones you get at Ikea? I mean, I'm serious, like they, this is real deal. This stuff tastes really good. Boom, um, and salt. We are gonna put a dash of olive oil in here. Now, I like to, we're gonna put a little lemon zest just so we have some kind of punch. But we're gonna use some lemon juice in that creamy Swedish meatball gravy that everybody knows uh, is traditional. Now, the other part of this meatball is, let me grab a saute pan here. We'll turn on our, oh, let's lock this thing down. Turn on our pan here, get a quarter cup of butter, quarter stick, if you will. It's a half cup of butter. Kind of start that to melt. Now we already did ahead of time here. I'm looking all around. You grated three quarters of a yellow onion. So we just put that right in there. 
And because we're using dry parsley, I put it in here. So this dry parsley will kind of bloom or come back to life, if you will, as it's melting with, or as the butter's melting and those onions are kind of sweating just a touch, not a ton. And then even in this process, we're gonna grab a little bit of that salt. All right, so we kind of let that melt and do its thing because that's gonna have to kind of cool a little bit to mix in with this mixture here. So here we got our meat mixture, right? And we're mixing it up and we're gonna make small meatballs, just a little small meatball or, or a small uh, ice cream scoop, a portion scoop, if you will. So we'll let this kind of let that onion thing do its thing. And we're gonna mix this a little bit more, right? And then we got, we have our, lost a little bit. We have, and this you can do ahead of time, like I said. So we're gonna, I have some already done, trust me. We're not gonna waste all day doing this 20 minute process. But we got these bad boys, a couple onions, a couple onions, a couple eggs. So we already got our onion rolling here, that's why I said that. Get that in there. This here becomes a fun, very wet mixture at this point. Kind of mix that up, let those onions kind of sweat a little bit. I want to make sure it doesn't become brown butter, if you will. Right? So, you kind of get the picture, right? Almost, it's very traditional uh, meatball kind of process, but with a good amount of grated onion, and then the clove and the cinnamon and the nutmeg, the allspice kind of thing going on there, um, makes it a little different than the traditional Italian meatball. So let's let this set over here and kind of cool off. We're gonna bring these bad boys, already browned, ready to rock and roll. I'm trying to see, there you go, maybe a better picture. Let's put that on there. Let that come up to heat a little bit or temp, if you will. I'm going to grab a towel. And I'll 